What's up, everybody? Uh, Aman Singh God, where are you? I haven't seen you in a while, son. You okay? Everything okay? Did my package ever arrive? Hmm. Anyways, uh, I have a video here about um, BJP Indian Citizenship Bill. Uh, and um, apparently it's a controversy in India. Immigration is something that's a big deal here in America. I think one of the things that you'll see the global elitists will do is if they can't um, move you off your culture, they'll dilute it by forcing in immigration. It is happening to America. They are trying it with Israel and they're trying it with India. Uh, we have a ton, a buttload of what you would call refugees, right? From everywhere, everywhere. And it, all, and it never seems to be people who share the country's values. It's always people who are counterbalanced to the culture. It is the reshaping of the world, reshaping of the superpowers, and I don't like it. <laughs> Anyways, that's my analysis. I, why am I laughing? Because it is 2 a.m. and I am sleep at. Look at these bags, dude. This is like vintage up all night making videos for my friends in India bags in the eyes. Yes. The sacrifices the professor goes for you is unbelievable. Somebody said, hey, you look like the white Sean Sharma. I can say, it's a nice looking head. Sean, it's, it's hard to pull off the bald head. Some people don't have good shaped heads. Have you noticed that? You see him bald, you're like, Ugh. So he, here's, here is Sharma talking about the BJP. You know, I've been seeing Indian a lot of people complaining bill. about the citizenship bill and the changes that the BJP government has made into the citizenship bill so minorities from Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Afghanistan can come into India. And I want to quickly address them today. My name is Sham Sharma. Welcome to the Sham Sharma Show. What's up, Sean Sharma? What's up, buddy? I'm the professor, but you know that. Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to another edition of the Sham Sharma Show. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you. Okay, You're so welcome, from our Sean. history, we have learned that wherever Hindus become slightly less than the majority, soon after that, they're essentially wiped out. They either become a tiny, minuscule minority or they're pretty much completely wiped out. And so we know that that happens. And so it is our duty to help the Hindus and the Sikhs that are stuck in these countries clinging on to survival as the last stand for Hindus in the world. India has a dharmic duty there. So I think in accordance to that, a new citizenship was introduced by the Bharatiya Janata Party, which amends the Citizenship Act 1955 to allow Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis and Christians from Bangladesh, Afghanistan and Pakistan to apply for Indian citizenship. It doesn't automatically make them Indian citizens. Mm. That's what a lot of people have been saying that, oh, it just immediately makes these people Indian citizens. Citizens. No, that's not what it happens. The proposal is that it amends the Schedule 3 of the Act to make applicants belonging to minority communities from the aforesaid countries eligible for citizenship by naturalization in seven years instead of the existing 12 years. So they are now eligible to apply. They're not automatically made citizens. They are eligible to apply. Also, in 2015 and 2016, the government passed two notifications exempting such immigrants from the Foreigners Act 1946 and the Passport Entry into India Act 1920. Now, both of these acts provide for deportation of these people, but then the, these refugees coming in were made exempt from these acts and it enables these people to continue living in india even if they had arrived before 31st of december 2014. so on paper if we look at it if we look at the dharmic aims of our country the dharmic aims of our civilization i think we want to be and we should strive to be a place where hindus and sikhs can come and feel safe so two main objections to this bill is the first one is that it violates article 14 of the constitution which basically provides equality before law or equal protection of the law to every person in India. And the second objection that people have is something that was mentioned in first post quite well, is that in fulfilling this promise, the central government is implicitly defining India as the Hindu homeland, something that the Hindutva Brigade have done for a long time. Now, first things first, you know, these people that are being invited to come to India, seek refuge in India and apply for citizenship in India, these are people that are being brutally suppressed and brutally discriminated against in the countries that they're being invited from. And they're facing a serious existential threat. Young Hindu girls in Pakistan are being abducted 
from their families, converted to Islam and married off to older Muslim men. And the families of these young girls have no recourse. The police won't help them. The politicians won't help them. These people are being killed for being kafirs. Even if the whole society doesn't support these things, there is a pretty significant section of these societies that give either explicit or implicit support to these activities. So that's the first thing. And looking at Article 14 as well, the Supreme Court has some interesting findings on that article. The Supreme Court finds that the principle of equality does not mean that every law must have universal application for all persons who are not by nature attainment or circumstances in the same position as the varying needs of different classes of persons often require separate treatment. It would be inexpedient and incorrect to think that all laws have to be made uniformly applicable to all people in one go. We could also said that the concept of equality allows for rational or discriminating discrimination. Also, it is not as if our constitution does not have discriminatory practices. Explicitly discriminates in favor of the downtrodden like the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Higher court judgments have actually also asked for creating a reservation system for just Muslims. There are also laws within our legal system that unduly favor minorities. For example, Isn't the, right to education, the Right to Education Act exempts unaided minority institutions from under its purview, from under its umbrella. But Hindu institutions are part of the... Don't get mad at me. I need to stop there because I have questions and comments and it's getting too much and it's going. I'm going to lose it in my mind because I'm a very old man. Reservations for just Muslims. I thought that was Pakistan. Like, wasn't that the the idea behind Pakistan was to create a a a nation for people who want to go be Muslim? Okay, that's number one. Number two, India is a Hindu nation. I'm, I got to tell you something, and I I I refer to India as Hindustan all the time, and I don't know, maybe. I don't know how many comments are on a page, but when I start doing Hindustan, Hindustan, Hind all the old Hindustan, right? When I do that, I get a probably one comment per page of comments on YouTube that says, don't call it Hindustan. Quit calling it Hindustan. Call it Bharat. If you're not going to call it India, call it Bharat. I don't, I don't, this idea that India is not Hindu, it's not a Hindu nation, is just sounds weird. It sounds absolutely weird to me as an outsider, like, America is kind of a Christian nation. We were founded as a Christian nation. We were founded on Judeo-Christian ethics. Concepts in the Bible, our court system comes from a Moses. You know, if you were to go ask the average American now, are you Christian? You'd probably get 80% to say yes, but they don't know what that means anymore, right? You know, they're, they're just, you know... Uh, if, if you would have asked the warrior queen when she was young, are you Christian? She would say, yes, I'm not Muslim and I'm not an atheist. I'm Christian. But she didn't understand any of Christ's teachings or, or what was, you know, what does that mean? How does your life look as you live it? Um, or going to Israel and being shocked that there's Jews there. What? There's all these Jewish people in Israel. What? Like, it's just so, like, I put up a poll in my community section, and and our, we do really well with the community section. I go look at other YouTubers, hardly anybody uses it. I mean, dude, you, you guys are awesome on the community section. I put up a poll about just how many of our viewers are Indian, or I'm sorry, are Hindu. I would say probably our Indian audience, we're probably 75%, 80% Indian of what, of our views. Um, and out of that 80% of our views, it was like 86 identified as Hindu. They identified as Hindu. That's a lot. I mean, this, to be act like you're surprised that India is Hindu, like that's going to cause, like, where, <laughs> where did the Hindus come from? Is You know, was there some magical island that's just creating Hindus? That just, I mean, come on, it's just so ridiculous. I don't, I don't get that. I don't understand that. I don't get it. Um, you know, or going into Russia and finding out, like, almost everybody's an atheist. They've had, uh, you know, 200 years of atheism. And, and you're shocked that the Russians are like, uh, we don't believe in God. <laughs> like, like, that's all they've been doing. 
you know so i i find this this idea of uh very very uh strange to me and you know and i know some of my indian friends get mad but but there's a tribe in the bible old story called the assyrians and when the the assyrians would take over an area they would conquer you in war they would lead your people your population out of the country and they would go plant you into another country then they would bring people that they conquered somewhere else and bring them into your country and it kept people at bay it destroyed the culture because our culture is tied to things um and it was very hard it was very hard for cultures to survive when this happened and and i think this is what's happening to america i think this is what's happening to india is uh the evildoers can't beat you so what they're going to do is destroy your culture they want to get rid of the hindu culture they want to get rid of it and they're going to do it through immigration they're going to do it let's like let's water it down you know because it 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 is a divided front because then you feel alone you feel under attack you feel like you want to give up and one of the things that comes up a lot is professor why do you even you know care about are you just just doing it for the views professor he's just he switched shoes he's just doing it for the views he listen dude my closest friends are indian i've done i've explained um, like a million times why i like india why i like indians um and is there a part of me that does videos for view uh yes hello it's youtube you know srk doesn't make a film and say i hope nobody watches it it's just very important for me to do this story and i don't want anybody to see it quick get out of here i mean it's just ridiculous there's so much ridiculousness going on isn't there like he's just doing like why would i make videos I want to make videos to express what's on, you know, and yes, I hope you watch them. Like, what is it? I don't know. This is turning into a complete rant. Um, I like Sean Sherman. Um, he is one of the YouTubers that I follow and I watch when I need Indian news. I listen to Sean Sherma and I listen to Arnab. Um, those are the two, my, my two Indian news sources. If you haven't subscribed to Sean Sherma yet, do it. Uh, you're going to get some good videos. He's very good at explaining things, and um, and I enjoy I enjoy his uh, commentary. I would love to give him a radio show on Dark Sky Radio. I would, but you know, baby steps, baby steps. Our media empire is growing. I was really shocked, <clears throat> um, just how fast we're growing. We've hit a, a spurt that is unlike anything that I have seen for myself. And we've shot up big time. Thank you for everybody who has watched and supported us. We really, really appreciate it. Um, I think, um, oh, what we got coming up. We have um, Independence Day. I'm going to go to the, the Phoenix Indian Cultural Center for Independence Day celebration. I'm going to be using my cell phone, and some of you guys I know say turn the phone landscape, and it won't give those bars. That's not true. All it does, because I have an Android, all it does is when I flip it, it is now the picture's flipped. You can't see it that way. So my apologies for that. I am going to get a GoPro, though, and so we'll GoPro things eventually, um, and I think you guys will like that. So uh, I'll catch you guys later. Peace and much love. We have so many videos coming this week, and we got to record. I'll have Ramanyana 3 coming up. I'll have Kings of the East Part 2. You guys are going to want to stay tuned. You're going to want to stay tuned. You're going to want to smash the like button. You're going to want to thrash the alert bell. And uh, you're going to want to subscribe and then go make 10 fake accounts and subscribe with those accounts. Somebody said, I can't believe you say that. You're a cheater. Come, I'm joking. You know, everybody needs to calm down. Is it just me? Or can nobody take a joke anymore? Is it just me? Okay, I'll catch you guys later. Peace and much love. The Professor.